about soup. I have to use two microphones because the students from the media class at Peters Township High School has agreed to film tonight's program. They're in the back there. I think we should give them a round of applause. Thank you very much for coming out this evening. Okay, so my name is Jan Kennedy, and together with Gina Wells, we're the social co-chairs for Women of Southwestern PA. This is the 19th annual grant recipient dinner. I said I wanted to thank the philanthropy committee. There are three. I said, well, who's the lead chair? They said, no, we're all equal. So Lisa McLaughlin, Renee Modrak, and Marianne Trechuk, would the three of you stand? We want to acknowledge the work that you do. Lisa, if you have a comment that you would like to make, you're going to have to come up and just quickly say something in this microphone so they can have it. Actually, um, I'll make this brief. We just are so, so appreciative of each and every one of you. We know that you're the ones that are in the trenches. You're face to face with these women and children and families that are in dire need of all of our love and support. And at the end of the day, that is what we are called to do. We are called to love each other and to help each other, to help our neighbors and to help those in need. So we just are so thankful for each and every one of you and all the hard work that you put into um, doing everything that you do to serve those in need. Thank you. At this time, I would also like to acknowledge our co-presidents, Vicki Mannion and Denise Ross, whose tireless efforts make it all work for us. So please just stand up for a moment. They're going to have some concluding remarks at the end of the evening. I just want you to know who our co-presidents are. Thank you. Actually, to make you aware of how much you have grown, I've been in this organization since its inception in the year 2000, which was a long time ago. My kids were in high school then. And Carolyn Yurkovich, our founder, unfortunately is not with us tonight because she's not feeling well. But she came to me and, and said, you know, we've been blessed in so many ways. And you all know that all of our lives have peaks and valleys, so we're certainly not feeling blessed all the time, but, um, but generally speaking, it was true. We'd been blessed in many ways, and she said, frankly, I think it's time for us to give back. And that was the incentive that started this group of women together, like-minded women who felt like, okay, to whom much is given, much is expected and we just need to work a little harder to help our community. So with that, women began. Uh, we've come a long way since then. I remember the first grant recipient event because it was at my house and there were 12 people there. <laughs> and, uh, and we really hadn't made that much money that particular year. So uh, we were trying to give ourselves a pep talk, but it wasn't what we had hoped. So we've been on a journey since then, and we've come such a long way since the year 2000. And we've come a long way because of new members, new young people that have joined the organization. So we've continued to evolve. Thank, thank goodness for all the young people that have agreed to be part of this organization. I want to reach out because tonight, from those 12 people that were at the first grant recipient dinner in 2000, we have 92 people here this evening. 50 of them are our grant recipients. And the remaining are members and guests. So I want to just take a moment to reach out to our guests tonight. We can only do what we do because of the help from the members of this organization. So if you're sitting out there thinking, and I'm not addressing this to the grant recipients, I'm really reaching out to our guests. If you're thinking, oh, I don't know, maybe I would join, maybe I wouldn't, I, I don't need one more thing on my plate. I remember that's what I told Carolyn when she said, let's do this. I said, I, I, I got soccer games, I, I, I'm a working mom, I can't do one more thing. But we can always do one more thing. 
So if you're thinking about joining, give it an extra thought tonight. And when you hear the good that we do from these organizations, I'm hopeful that you'll see our membership chair and you'll decide to join tonight. Um, so without further ado, I want Gina to come up here right now because she has some information about a holiday event that's upcoming and we want to address members and also prospective new members who might want to be part of this. Good evening, members. Please consider this to be your save the date postcard. Our da the date for the holiday social is Thursday, December 12th. Check your email inboxes for the invitation next week. It'll have all the details. In keeping with our philanthropic roots, we'll be collecting items for local organizations. The plans are being finalized, but we can say one of the items being collected will be a small stuffed animal, like a beanie baby size. The Dormont and Peters Township Police Departments will be keeping the small stuffed animals in the trunks of their police cruisers and they will distribute them to children that they encounter that are experiencing traumatic situations like a car accident, a fire, or anything like that. Um, more details will be available on the holiday social invitation when it comes out next week. And to our prospective members and guests with us this evening, I'm gonna switch hats because I'm also membership chair. We offer our members numerous opportunities to donate their time, talents, and treasures through the women organization. Members are able to pick and choose which opportunities they wish to participate and to which extent they wish to participate. We hope this, e this evening will inspire you to become a member of women and to join us as we make a difference in the lives of women and children in Western Pennsylvania. Thank you. Thank you. Please eat your soup while we're talking. I just was told it's getting cold. We don't want you to have cold soup. but. Since many of you say grace before we eat, we have a prayer to express gratitude. It's listed, it, it's, it's on a sheet on your table. So we're just gonna take a second and read this together. Uh, I just wanna comment that um, one of my heroes was John F. Fitzgerald Kennedy and he once said, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. So with that being said, let's read this together. We gather tonight humbled by all that we have. Help us to learn to share not only our food, but our lives, so others may have reason to pause, give thanks, and pass on that which has been given to them. So when we have food, remember the hungry. When we have work, remember the jobless. When we have home, remember the homeless. When we have family, remember those who are alone. Let us pray for the soldiers who protect us, as well as the peacemakers who reach out to help those in need. Let us pray for our parents. Because of their sacrifices, our lives have been enriched. Let us pray for those who toil with their hands and with their minds. It is because of their efforts that our world is a better place. Finally, remembering all this, Help us not to be complacent, but feel compassion and concerned enough to help through our words and action, those who need what we so often take for granted. Amen. Thank you. Please eat your soup while it's hot. We are gonna start the program and our first, if you look at the program, you'll notice that we have aligned these people up. But one of the representatives from the women's, from the Women's Choice Network, I believe. Center and shelter. The Women's Center Shelter of Greater Pittsburgh. Okay, she's having her family's having health issues, so she's gonna kick off the program because she may have to leave early and she didn't want to miss the opportunity to share uh, what they, how they used our funds. So would you come forward, please? Two to three minutes each, uh, each representative. Good evening. 
evening, everybody. Hi, I'm Nicole. I'm Nicole Molinero. I'm the president and CEO for Women's Center and Shelter of Greater Pittsburgh. It's such a delight to be here tonight with everybody. Thank you for allowing me to go first. I won't go into details. My dog is really sick. My husband is sick, and our five-year-old daughter is trying to help with both of them. That's so cute and not helpful. So <laughs> I appreciate you letting me do this first. So our funding um, from the Women of Southwestern Pennsylvania, which we're so thankful for, is for our children's program for advocacy and counseling for our moms and kids. So we served over 325 children last year at Women's Center and Shelter. We are a domestic violence program, I should say. And we also served uh, well over 300 moms, specifically through our child care services. So we do counseling for the moms, counseling for the kids. We do behavioral support for the children. We have free time programming and tons of partners, some of whom are in this room, to uh, really make the kids' time with Women's Center and Shelter enjoyable, whether they're staying in the shelter, whether they're coming in for our non-resident services, they're using our children's program, and hopefully just getting to be a kid and getting away from the stress and the violence and just being able to enjoy themselves. So we're so thankful for this funding because it really allows us to help the kids be kids. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. I think this is a catch. Yeah, this is a catch for this. No, I think it'll work like this. You have to hold it up. No? I'm sorry, I was trying to do So we can't stand around. Okay, okay, okay. All right. We'd like to welcome Achieva. Come up, please, and share a few remarks about the Program. <laughs> program. Okay. Hi, um, I'm Allison Dushak from Achieve. I'm our development coordinator. Um, and I just want to say thank you to Women of Southwestern PA uh, <laughs> for the grant that we received. Um, so if you don't know Achieva, we are a um, disability organization. We mainly help people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Um, and we're one of the um, only ones in Southwestern PA that really help from birth to grave. So we do early intervention, we do um, home care, residential supports, we help people get into the communities, get jobs if they want one, um, all the way through. We have a family trust to set up trusts, um, so a lot of things. But specifically, the grant um, helped our Books at Birth program. So through our early intervention program, um, we go into hospitals and we give newborn babies a new book and also a developmental screener card. So this helps promote early literacy, but also helps parents track um, where their kids are developmentally when they're really young. So it may help um, you know, avoid the need for special needs issues later in life. Um, so this grant, we are currently at Forbes and West Penn, which is about 150 uh, newborns a month. And this grant is helping us move into Jefferson Hospital as well. So you guys are just helping us really reach more babies, catch uh, special needs, and you know um, promote early literacy really early on, um, and helping lots of little cute babies. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Allison, very much. If you haven't noticed, we're going alphabetically with this, if that's okay. And uh, we'd like to welcome Art Expression to come up and share a few words about your grant. Thank you. Art Expression is up now. <laughs> that's you, Angela. That's me. Hi. Yes. Yes, so, okay. Here, I'll hold this. All right. Okay. I have, I'm going to read my statement. Okay, sure. Okay, sorry. Absolutely. All right. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, ahead. there's I'll two. It's not just this one. <laughs> For some reason. Um, hi. I'm Angela Loudon, founder and president of Art Ex Hi. <laughs> I'm Angela Loudon, founder and president of Art Expression, Inc. Um, I'm so glad to be here. We are so grateful for the... Um, funding that you provided us for Sisters Place. I want to tell you a little bit about Art Expression. Our mission is to, to provide social and emotional learning through the arts and provide academic enrichment in an inclusive setting to schools, homeless shelters, and community organizations. It is a fully inclusive after-school program offered free of charge to students that uses components of art and music therapy. So we use 
master degree art therapist and a, a bachelor degree music therapist. So we incorporate uh, components of both. Um, since our inception in 2001, we've served over 12,000 children in seven southwestern Pennsylvania counties. Uh, we, we are so grateful for the grant we received from the women of southwestern Pennsylvania to provide our Parenting from the Heart Arts Enrichment Workshops for a group of homeless mothers and their dependent children at Sister's Place for eight weeks. Um, Sister's Place, I think, is here. Yes. <laughs> so Sisters Place is a nonprofit located in Clareton, Pennsylvania, that serves single homeless mothers and children. Uh, our Parenting from the Heart curriculum includes music as well as art expression, and activities are geared to pro processing the trauma experience experienced by homeless parents and children. Um, and uh, new activities strive to teach parents how to use the arts to help bond with their children. So thank you very much. This is our first time here, and we're just very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're just going to Thank you so much. Okay, great. Uh, Chartier Center, would you like to come up and say a few words, please? Okay, thank you. Mary Kay, welcome. Thanks. Hi, good evening, and um, thank you for having us. Um, we're really excited to be here. Uh, my name is Mary Kay Bond. I'm with Chartier Center. We're a community mental health center. We provide services to adolescents through adults, uh, treatment services, outpatient services for um, individuals struggling with their behavioral health, substance abuse. We have a day program for adults with intellectual disabilities. We have a range of residential services, and we also provide a homeless to housing program. That's where the grant that we receive from the Women of Southwest PA comes in. This is our bubble bag, and in our bubble bag is feminine hygiene products, underwear, and socks. Hard to imagine that we could go without that kind of um, you know, need. Everyone, every female has that need. So we are really um, excited to have gotten our grant and we have a small food pantry. It's called Mary's Market that's inside um, our main building in Bridgeville. And uh, we have, with the grant, have added our bubble bags and so they are available to our service coordinators and our outreach workers who are working with the homeless. And um, we have also found they've come in very handy to many of our females who are coming into our program who may be coming from the jail or um, homeless and do not have access to these kinds of products, particularly since they are not covered through um, SNAP benefits. So thank you very much. We're very pleased to be here. Thank you, Mary Faye, and we love your bag. They're so pretty. <laughs> Next, I would like to welcome Anchor Point Counseling. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for having us. We are very grateful for the support of the women of Southwestern PA. Anchor Point Counseling Ministry is a community mental health center. We're located in the North Hills of Pittsburgh, and we serve community members and families who are struggling with anxiety, depression, and just a variety of problems that are plaguing our community right now. And we serve them regardless of insurance or ability to pay. So anybody can come to us in times of need. And the grant from the Women of Southwestern PA supported our parenting education programs. And uh, we all know that parenting can be a challenge. And with all the changes in our world, parenting has become even more difficult. At our center, we're seeing rates of childhood anxiety and depression skyrocketing. We're seeing teens uh, with suicidal ideations, um, just some really challenging problems in our world. And I wanna share some quotes from the parenting education groups that we are doing. Um, these are direct quotes from some of the parents. 
It was helpful to hear experiences of other parents who have the same challenge as I do. I learned skills that I can use in many life situations. I learned how to speak with my kids in a way that may produce better communication. And it was nice not being judged and getting time to talk with other parents. So these are parents who are struggling and just being able to come together with other parents and navigate those challenges together has been really empowering to them and it's because of your support and we are very grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. We are going to be having our entree soon. And before that, we'd like to invite all the grant recipients to come forward so we can take a group photo. If you just come up here in front of the screen, we would appreciate that. Thank you. I put this. Did I miss somebody? Who? Oh, they need to check her off. I'll get her next. Tell her, tell her she's next. There you go. Oops, all right. Oh, now, uh oh, this came over here. Come on over here. Come on. Come on over here. Either that or hold it. No, I'm sorry. To have to put that. Okay. Ready. Presenting Christ the Redeemer Diaper Pantry. Hi, um, good evening. My name is Emily. I am the director of uh, the Anglican Parish of Christ the Redeemer Diaper Pantry. Um, and we serve um, basically any families that want to come to us. <laughs> basically right now we are serving uh, five different counties. Um, diapers are not covered under WIC or SNAP, so we provide our families with 50 diapers a month uh, or 30 pull-ups as well as wipes. Um, for the grant money that we received, we provided our families with health hygiene bags. Uh, so these bags were more geared towards the toddler age to help um, instill healthy hygiene habits um, in the young little ones. Uh, to this date, we have distributed over 580,000 diapers, um, and we've only opened in 2015. And we have so far, thank you. <laughs> And uh, so far, we have diapered over a thousand children within the surrounding uh, five counties. So, thank you so much uh, for the grant. We really appreciate it. You're welcome, and we appreciate you as well. Okay, the last group we're going to have come forward before we have our dinner is Church. Oh no, Angel's Place. Place. Angel's Place. Uh, there you are. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Carrie Gosquin. I'm the development director for Angel's Place. And we are so grateful for this contribution. At Angel's Place, we provide early childhood education and family support services to single parent families. And the parents that come to our program are full time students. And while they're getting their education, they're provided free childcare from birth through age five until their children go to kindergarten. And they're Parents also receive benefits of our program, so they get to work with a licensed family support director who helps to help them on their journey while they're going through school and trying to figure out what their next steps are. Our families come through our program and are single for a variety of reasons. Their partners may have been experiencing domestic violence, incarceration, and even death or separation. So when our families come to us, we want to provide a safe place for them where they are cared for. Not only are our services provided at no cost, but we do not we do not charge or expect them to come with diapers, wipes, formula, food, or snacks. So that's provided to them at no, at no cost through the whole duration that they're in our program. And this funding helped to provide a lot of those services to our families. And it's a huge benefit and a relief to know that you can focus on the next steps that you need to take to reach your goals because you have everything provided to you. You just have to get to get to school and get your child to Angel's Place and take care of the rest. And 
it's a huge benefit and we are extremely grateful. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Enjoy your dinner. While you begin to um, enjoy your dinner, I just want to give you a reminder or a suggestion that there are uh, quite, as you can tell, close to 30 um, groups here tonight. So we want to encourage, it's so important for you to network with each other. I'm sure if we had an example earlier, you already are to a certain degree, but uh, you might get some other ideas tonight about groups that you can open up and reach out to. And Denise? It's, um, <laughs> Laura Richard told me that all of the information about our grant recipients, the contact information, will be on our women's website, and that will be a great opportunity then for you to use that data for networking. Okay, so we suggest that it's a really nice idea, and uh, you can get up, you know, after dinner and talk to each other too. Enjoy. While you finish your entree, we'd like to continue through the evening and um, so we can put this meeting for you. Um, I would like to start now with any representative from the church union. If you'd be kind enough to come up, please. women for once again funding our reading and mentoring network programming. Church Union is actually, uh, this year we're celebrating our 125th year. Can you believe that? Our, actually our full name is United Methodist Church Union and uh, there's a lot of Methodists that have never heard of us. We've been in the background all these years really. At this point in time, we're kind of more of a typical 501c3 social service agency. We're affiliated with the United Methodist Church, but we're not governed by them. We have our own board and all of that stuff. So for the reading and mentoring program, we're in our 10th year of pairing compassionate volunteers, primarily seniors, with elementary children in low-income school districts, well, neighborhoods. And this, these children are struggling uh, because of the, maybe the, the situation they find at home with the basics of reading. So we work with children from K through fourth grade. Different children, different grades at the, the various schools that we're in. And um, I found out when I was doing a little research recently that 20% of the children in Pennsylvania are below the poverty line, which was shocking. And um, generally, our poverty here in Pennsylvania is lower than the national average. So it's, you know, we're all very needed here in, uh, in what we do. One of the things that's kind of different about what we do is our volunteers, because we go into the school during the day, so we need people that aren't working. So typically, we have volunteers that are retired. And guess, guess what? They're all women. We maybe have a handful of guys. I actually did the statistics not too long ago. I want to say it's something like 90% of our, all of our volunteers with all programming are women, and only a, a little bit are men. And um, it's just really an amazing thing for both the kids and the adults that go into these programs. I figured out also recently that the median age for our volunteers is 75. So it's pretty amazing. We have a volunteer that's 96. And I, I got to tell you, when they tell the kids, they're like, who's the 96-year-old lady? They can't tell. She looks awesome. So it's, it's pretty cool. So our, our ministry is powered by senior retired women who are still going strong. So it's pretty amazing. Some of the things that we noticed with this, um, with this programming is that attendance is better for the kids on the days that they get to meet with their reader. Their PSSA performance is boosted. Do we fix the program? Not completely, there's a lot of factors involved, but we make a difference. The kids gain confidence to speak aloud when they're called on. This is not a small thing. I don't know if there's any teachers in the, in the audience, but it is a big deal. A lot of children that are struggling with their reading, 
They really do not want to talk out loud. They're afraid to read the board, um, all of those things. Uh, about a year ago, I had the opportunity to uh, do a little tour at one of the schools, and I talked to a teacher, and she told me she had a student who was way behind grade level reading, but um, after being with his mentor for a couple months, he actually volunteered in class to answer a question. And she was like, oh, it was like so amazing. And it's because they're, they're reading aloud with their mentor every week. So they gain confidence in it. And they're, you know, these compassionate volunteers, <coughs> ladies primarily, are saying, you know, you're doing a great job. And it really makes a difference. The uh, seniors that we work with, in addition to being vital, intelligent people with a lot to give, you know, they, they come to us. These are, many of them are professionals. Many of them are teachers. They've retired, but they still want to work with the kids. And it's a great way for folks to have meaningful volunteer work after they've retired. And what we find, um, one thing we do that's a little different than maybe some other reading programs that you might be aware of with OASIS, perhaps, or um, RIF or something like that, is we go in as a group. So it's really a neat experience for our volunteers, too. They can go in with their friends. They can make new friends. They have coffee before. They have lunch after. It's just a really neat opportunity for social interaction as well, not just with the kids, but with each other as well. It's kind of a way for them to hold isolation at bay. They have something to do. They have a purpose. They're really, the kids really reward you with love. You're like a superstar when you walk into the building. They're so excited to see you. So if you have a chance, something that I looked at recently, um, um, if you ha have access to the New York Times, they just had an article out called uh, From Sunrise to Sunset, The Long School Days of Homeless Students. Now, not all of our students are homeless, but a lot of them are, I'd say, housing insecure. So we do have children from shelters at the different schools, but some of them are just bouncing from place to place to place. So that's an excellent article if you want to get a sense of what these kids go through when, they, um, you know, when they're just trying to get to school every day. So that's something, that's where the compassion comes in, where we, our program and our people help these kids to feel love in the moment that they're in with those folks. So um, finally, I want to say that we're very honored because we've been allowed to uh, begin the process to become a preferred provider for Pittsburgh Public Schools, and it's been 10 years of trying to do that, to have a good partnership, and we're really, really excited about that. So thank you so much to the women and to all of you who are doing this kind of work out there. You're amazing, and we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Oops. Thank you. Next up, uh, the Domestic Outreach Corporation. Do we have anyone in attendance? We weren't quite certain. I'm thinking not, but we are grateful that, uh, that we've been able to help them just fit this year. <laughs> Next in line would be Dress for Success. Um, oh, very good. Genevieve. Got it, got it. Thank you. Hello. Uh, the, the first thing I want to say, I'm Genevieve. I'm the branch manager for Washington and Green for Just for Success Pittsburgh. But when I look around this room, and I want to thank all of you for supporting all these wonderful organizations, and so many I work with quite often, it's amazing. Um, Just for Success Pittsburgh, briefly, is made up of four branches, five counties. We have Washington and Green, Allegheny, Butler and Fayette. Um, and what we do is we suit women free of cost for interviews, employment, job training, 
And one that's true to my heart as a former corrections officer in Washington County is for court suitings. Um, so this has been a banner year for Dress for Success. We have launched two mobile units, so now we can reach women who have transportation issues to get this clothing. And last month alone, four branches, five counties, and 12 employees and our amazing volunteers, we suited 567 women. So to be in an event like this and be able to say that to you is amazing. And we love every client we can touch. And when I look around the room and work with so many of you, because with Dress for Success, Every, any nonprofit can refer to us, and I'm looking around the room and seeing people who refer these women to us every day and we work with, and that's what's important. So thank you, Women of Southwestern PA, for supporting all of us, and thank all of you. Thank you, Genevieve. <laughs> Our list got a little confusing, so we're going to just ask and see if we do have a representative from the East End Cooperative Ministries. Oh, good. Thank you. We have a traveling roadshow. Oh, you do. There's a group of you. I'm going to pass it. Are you going to pass it? It's yes. always good when there's three of you. Okay. <laughs> we're good. Remember with people? Yes. Okay. Hi. We're the Traveling Road Show from East End <laughs> Cooperative Ministry. Uh, my name is Reverend Kelly Wild. I am the Impacts Program Director there. And um, we thank you, Women of Southwest PA, for once again supporting our program to help um, women gain employment and be able to become self-sufficient. So instead of you hearing from me as another, I say talking head, um, I have brought two of my now co-workers who have benefited from your program and thought it would be best to hear directly from them. Good evening. My name is Delcy Kennedy and E. Uh, and EECM has been a great inspiration to me. Um, I'm happily married. I'm working full time. Get ready to buy a house. Thanks all to Reverend Kelly Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, guys. I'm Dee. Um, EECM has also been a great inspiration for me. My situation's a little different. I'm currently a resident. Uh, I'm not from Pittsburgh, so coming here was new. I really didn't have no family, nowhere to stay. This place has not only gave me shelter, but they've also opened many other doors for me. I graduated from the Soul Ford program. I'm currently in the apprentice program, trying to become their first apprentice, sort of like the face to the whole Soul Ford program overall. Uh, it's a blessing. You guys helping and contributing is amazing. Everyone there is amazing. Um, it's definitely changed my life. I feel like I'm blessed. I'm currently, you know, trying to become a permanent Pittsburgh resident, so I'm looking for places and whatnot. But I am comfortable with my current situation, and there's always room to grow. And this is what this place is about, growing and getting better. And Reverend Kelly has been everything to me. You know, it's open doors, and I'm just grateful. And I want to thank you guys as well. Thank you. Thank you, women. Thank you. Uh, thank you. That's lovely. Thank you. Next, at, next up, we would actually like to look at Hairpiece Charities. If Hairpiece is here. And in actuality, I think I skipped one. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, wait. It wasn't your turn yet, was it? But come on. We'll do that backwards. Okay, all right. Okay, Let's come on. All right. Okay. All right. My blonde stuff. Look at this? Okay. I can't hold it. All righty then. Hey, I'm Bonnie Diver, and you may have heard my voice on the radio for a few years. Awesome. <laughs> so now you know what I look like. But um, so, yeah, so I, I am on the iHeart radio stations. You'll hear me. I, Kelly's a friend of mine, Reverend Kelly. 
Uh, and she's like, where are you these days? I've been at KDK Radio. I've been, you know, kind of around the block at, at um, you know, we get fired all the time and then we find another place to land. And so right now I'm in the iHeart building, which is the gold building at the top of Green Tree. And I'm, I do a traffic for six of the stations there. Three WS is where I talk and have a lot more fun, though. So to listen in in the morning, I will be up at 4 a.m. So, um, so I, I know two minutes. This is tough for somebody who talks for a living. But I will try. Um, and and I, I just want to say, it is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. We went to the premiere last night. It is. You have got to see this movie. It is so, it is so fabulous. I'm telling you. It, and, it's, and it's creative. It's not necessarily what you might expect, even though you know it's going to be good. Many, many levels. So you must see it. And we, Sunday morning, will have interviews with the director and the fellow who was in the inspiration for the movie uh, on our stations in the, in the morning. So Sunday morning you'll hear that. Which leads me to also say, before I even talk about my charity, those of you who have charities, we have what they call um, community outreach programming. And you can get um, an interview with my partner, Johnny Hartwell, and we, we make him wear clothes and pants and things, so he, he is presentable. We kid about that, because you don't see us. So, um, but, but he does a Sunday morning program, seriously, and if you would like to know about getting on the air, talking about your project, talking about your nonprofit, we have time set aside that we can do that. And, and if you need that information, please talk to me, and it's an email address, and, and, and it's, he's happy to get you on. So, uh, and again, he doesn't bite. So I have hairpiece charities. My time's up, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> All right, but but I have hairpiece charities, and pieces spelled P-E-A-C-E, and that is because of the piece that I went through when I went through breast cancer 16 years ago. Uh, after I went through my treatment, talked about it on the radio, my doctor said, you're the person that needs to start an organization to help women to pay for wigs needed because insurance does not. Um, and so I said, if not me, who? And so that was that's the response. And so we made that happen 16 years ago, and I'm happy to say that we helped over 400 women and girls last year to be able to purchase a wig. Not only do we give $200 to help them to buy the wig, but we also have a couple of books that we send out, Prayers to Get Through Cancer, and it's not just breast cancer, just because I had that, it's all types of cancer, and then the Warrior's Guide, which is information about good food, fighting stress, things like that that you can get a, a hold on and get your grip on and make your, your uh, a little bit more solid on what you do. So um, again, uh, Hairpiece Charities, P-E-A-C-E, -E, thank you so much for supporting our women, and uh, I, I think I'm done, aren't I? All right. I All right. Thank you so much. You. All right. I could go on. <laughs> oh, yeah. My sister is a 17. Oh, 17. Nice. Oh, you take the okay. Thank you. <laughs> she really wanted to keep the microphone. I'm not sure we want to keep her doing it, but we're good. Thank you so much. Um, next up would be the representative with Horses with Oak. There we are. And you made me do it, huh? I know. Hello. <laughs> hey, now you're in trouble. All right, now. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where to put this. I'll you need it. it. Can you hold it? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can sure. Hi, everyone. Um, women of Southwestern PA, thank you so much. This is our second time that we have been a recipient um, of one of your grants. And uh, Horses with Hope, for those of you that are unaware, um, we offer therapeutic riding and equine assisted learning to individuals with disabilities and behavioral issues, uh, uh, teenagers with anxiety, things like that. Um, the, the largest of our program is the therapeutic riding portion of it, where individuals with special needs will come and they'll actually ride the horse and it's through the movement of the horse that is beneficial for the individuals. Um, and because of that movement, for every stride of the horse, it is a three-dimensional movement, and it's a repeatable, repeatable and symmetrical, which means that for just sitting on that horse, and that horse takes one step, for every step they take, there's a full rotation of your hips, 
which um, then makes your torso sit more upright. When your torso is more straight, then it opens up your airways. That helps with digestion. It helps with your speech. And that's just with sitting on the horse. And then we interact with the individuals working on various um, goals that they might have for um, fine and gross motor skills, balance, muscle control, trunk control, things of, the, of that nature. <clears throat> but we're in our 13th year of service. Um, I started the organization because my daughter, Jamie Lynn, was born with Down syndrome. And um, so she was the inspiration behind the program. <clears throat> I always get choked up for 16 years later. Still get choked up. But in any event. <laughs> but for, I just wanted to give you a couple examples. This last year, we brought on a, a new client. <clears throat> Simon is his name. He's a 10-month-old baby. And he had, um, <clears throat> has very low muscle tone. He wasn't able to sit up on his own. He can't, has no head control or anything like that. So we actually have um, a rider sit with him on the horse on a bareback pad and we um, are contained inside the arena with him. And about six weeks into it, I asked his parents, I said, you know, have you seen any, any progress with him at all? Because every week I don't get to see a whole lot um, of what's going on with him. So she said, actually, I did. She said, he just got retested this past week, and he was able to sit up on his own for one minute. So, uh, and that's after six weeks of, of uh, just riding, sitting, sitting on that horse. So that's one story. Another story is this little, um, it's a beautiful family. The, the mom is like a third of my size, and she has a daughter that's five years old with a rare disorder, a uh, genetical disorder. And... Um, Anyway, the, the, this five-year-old was, wasn't even walking. She had real low muscle control, um, barely crawling. So here's this little woman carrying this five-year-old on her hip. She comes down the driveway, and this baby, well, she's not a baby, she's five years old. She's just crying and crying and crying and crying. We, we try everything, mom riding with her, us riding with her, singing songs. So, you know, six weeks into it, seven weeks into that, mom said, you know, I don't think I can sign her up for another session. I just can't put her through this any longer. And I said, oh, I get that. I understand that. It's not, not a problem or whatever. She comes back the next week for her next lesson. She said, sign her up. And I said, what do you mean? And she said, well, when she carries that child on her hip, um, the, you know, normally your child will wrap their legs around and give you some support. Well, her child never did that. When she left, that child grabbed onto her hip. So so she is now running, walking, talking, um, and uh, yeah, it's just so. Those are some of the stories that we get to see out there that are just incredible. They're just little miracles that we get to see every day. And it's not, you know, for those of you that, that might not know about therapeutic riding, it's not a pony ride in the backyard. It truly is therapy happening, and uh, we're grateful for the support of uh, Women in Southwestern PA. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry, I need to hold that. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Um, okay, so Renee sometimes can't spell, and I skipped one. So um, if, <laughs> I'm sorry. So if we could actually have the representative from Genesis of Pittsburgh Incorporated. My apologies. Sometimes I can't spell. Genesis, and I'm from the Washington Center. Um, we've, I'm the director there, and we have been in the community for over 35 years. We provide pregnancy and parenting support, and included with that, we um, have uh, educational programs that our clients are able to participate in. If they do participate, they earn baby bucks, and they can use the baby bucks to get such items uh, as brand new car seat, brand new crib, pack and plays, and so forth. Um, so we used our grant money this year to uh, provide some more uh, things that we, like supplies that we needed for our classes, some new DVDs to update, and we also used it to purchase some uh, gasoline gift cards because that's 
you know, a huge issue for many of our clients with transportation, and it also provides a nice incentive for them to come. So uh, it's been a very great program, and the women of Southwest PA have, have just been wonderful and a real blessing to our clients to help them to come in to use our services. So we thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna try not to skip someone again. Um, next up would be Independent Family Resource Group. Do we have anyone in the audience? I was, we weren't certain. Um, the Lemoyne Community Center. Thank you, Tony. While we're doing this, I'm the dancer, and I'm usually the clumsy one. I usually fall up the steps, down the step, but I do fall on beat. So that's important to understand that, yes. I was in Jamaica a couple weeks ago, and I was on the floor, and this little girl next to me, I call her little girl, she had her boobies out and her booty out, tattoos up her arm, and she looked like she was trying to challenge me on the dance floor. That is a no-no. Do not get it twisted. I mean, I, I beat her like I was her mama on that dance floor. Somebody have to videotape it and put it on Facebook. So if you want to see that showdown, go to my Facebook page and you will see. Um, but I want to thank, and I would like for all of us women in this room to give the women of Southwest a hand. You all are fabulous at what you're doing. Look at all the agencies you're supporting. And I just want to take that time to say that. Uh, we have so many programs that we have at the Lemoyne Center, but I just wanted to tell you a story of how our, our um, feeding program got started. We were getting our food from Washington School District, and the kids were just throwing the food away. And I could not understand it because while they were throwing the food away, they were angry, they were irritable, uh, the school performance was low. Uh, that was during the time, I don't know if you remember, when the state was ready to take over the Washington School District because the performance level was so low. So I'm sitting there and I'm trying to figure out how can we combat this hunger because I grew up in a family of six and we grew up hungry all the time. And I, I was sitting there going, how can you throw pizza away? They can't mess up pizza. They were just throwing it away. So one day I brought my lunch and I had pesto pasta. And when I sat down at the table, the kids there immediately said, ew, what is that? Because it's green. I said, look, do not yuck my yum. And, and as soon as they said that, my niece comes around the corner and says, oh, pesto, auntie, can I have some? And they looked at her like she was crazy. And I said, you all don't know what this is. So I said, try a noodle. Oh, I'm not eating, try a noodle. So I had each of them try a noodle. And they said, well, Miss Joyce, if we had food like this, we'd eat it all the time. That was the birth of our NutriFit feeding program. So I went home and I tried to figure out how could we begin to feed our kids. During that time, we had about 100 kids in our program, and we began feeding them. And that year was 2012. We started feeding about 9,000 children. Right now, in 2018, we're at 25,000 children that we are feeding in that food program. And every year, the Women of Southwest has supported that, and I just appreciate what they've done. And we just want to give everyone encouragement that not only did the test scores go up, but the crime rate went down. And it didn't go down a little bit, it went down so significantly that it was more than 50%. So when you feed people the right food and give them the right nourishment, they're going to do things that are powerful. So I took kids from a hopelessness into a hopefulness. And that is what is happening. And, and God says, all I need is for one person to believe. And I don't know why he chose me, because I was the, the dance teacher perfectly fine as a dance teacher. And he had me close all those studios down. And a couple of months ago, the district attorney said to me, well, I can say this to you now. Um, but Miss Joyce, we actually thought you were crazy. We thought you were crazy. Because see, I was speaking to them from the vision that God had given to me. And I had seen all the kids. And when I had asked somebody to come work at the center, I said, there's going to be all these kids. And she looked around and said, like, where are the kids? Like, what kids are you talking about? I said, just trust me. They'll come. And she's like, What's, I don't know if I really want to volunteer here. She really thought I was crazy. Now today, that same woman will tell you, we have so many kids. Our after-school program went from 70 kids to 130 kids. Our, our um, camp challenge went from 
200 kids to 260 kids, and we have to have a wait list. So we must be doing something right, and we could not do it without the women of the Southwest. I want to thank you for that. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you. I dance with the girl. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Oh, this is awesome. Um, next, um, the Little Sisters of the Poor, Sister Josephine. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> Furniture like this doesn't help ones like us. <laughs> First of all, my name is Sister Josie, that is Sister Marcel. We're very happy to be here. We thank all of you for the wonderful um, occasion we have to be together, but especially for helping our residents. Uh, we care for the elderly poor, and we've been in North, I'm four months old, uh, we're at North Brit Benton Avenue. We used to have a home also in, on Penn Avenue, for the ones of you that might remember what your grandmother said. So we've been around a long, long time, and we're very grateful to the people of Pennsylvania, especially Pittsburgh, who have helped us all these years. Otherwise, we certainly would not be here. And again, for the grant that you gave us, we were able to um, get four chairs that left a bit to help the president get out of their chair a little bit. One of the recipients is one of Sister's residents in her unit. She's 103, and she's blind. So she's very, very grateful for that assistance, and she's precious, she really is, as they all are. We're blessed. Um, just one question that people ask me often, I thought I'd just put it out there. There is no height requirement to be a little sister. <laughs> if you, they call us the munchkins, but we're really not. <laughs> we have a few football players, I mean, uh, basketball players in our group. We have a couple there, six, six, to not at our home right now, but in our community. So I don't know why we're all so short, but <clears throat> anyway, we, we want to thank you again for keeping us going for those 148 years. We are very, very pleased to serve here in uh, Pittsburgh, certainly, and, um, and the residents here are precious. They are, so if you have not been to our home, I, I certainly open doors to you. Please come and see what you are part of, because it is only, people in Pittsburgh that are doing this. So yes, we are there, we're trying to make them comfortable, make them happy, and usher them into heaven as they, they get up there. We have some over 100, of course, as all homes probably do, but there don't seem to be in any hurry. So I don't <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we're very, very happy to serve with you, and it's thanks to you that we're still here. So thank you, God bless you, and have a good night. God bless you, Jesus. Thank you. Up next, um, the Maya organization. Okay. Um, as I said, we're, we weren't exactly positive, everyone had shown. Um, next would be then the McGuire Memorial, McGuire Memorial Foundation. I apologize. I don't speak English that well. Good evening, my name is Dawn. I'm the executive director of the McGuire Memorial Foundation, and we support the capital and programmatic needs of McGuire Memorial in support of their mission to provide a continuum of care for children and adults with uh, severe physical and intellectual disabilities. And we're really grateful for the support of women of Southwest PA. Um, specifically, the grant we received this year was for our Employment Options Center, which uh, provides vocational, training and employment for some of the folks that we serve. And it's a subgroup of that employment center um, that we call our Entrusted Treasures Production Company. And they make amazing crafts like this candy bouquet, which I brought as a prop, and someone can feel free to take that tonight. Um, but as you know, women, especially women with disabilities, are often underemployed. And so this provides an opportunity for the women to create crafts and creations and sell them to earn a wage. So uh, we're really grateful we were able to purchase a cricket machine. I'm not really sure what that is. I know it makes labels and some other craft supplies so that they can create a lot of wonderful things and sell them to the public. So thank you so much for your support. We appreciate it. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you so very much. Um, next up would be the Meals on Wheels at the Crossroads in Peters Township. Okay. Um, how about the Monyak Community Services Incorporated? No. I'm on a roll. Um, one more time. Uh, the New Century Careers. Hallelujah. <laughs> We've got one. I feel like... I feel like Annie Potts and the Ghostbusters. We got one! <laughs> Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Neil Ashbaugh. I'm the Director of Services with New Century Careers, and I'm really, really proud to be here this evening. Uh, thank you for your continued support. Uh, I believe this is our second year in a row being here. Uh, last year, the support helped us to serve uh, underserved populations in our training and job assistance uh, program. And this year we targeted and focused, uh, focused our um, donation on uh, attracting more women to the field of manufacturing. If it it's, might be hard to believe, but if you were to go into a manufacturing site, this is what you'd see. And quite frankly, this isn't what I want to see anymore. So we focused, we focus on providing tuition free uh, training for machinists, learning how to run uh, equipment that brings value to metals and metal products. And we also provide job assistance in, in helping these folks find jobs. So when I think about some of the women that we've helped through the grant, I think of a 54 year old woman who was a home health aide who decided that that career was over and she wanted to do something more with learning how to run equipment, and she did. I also think of a, uh, another woman that's currently working our program in the evenings. She works for a German company called VECA in Harmony, PA, up north, and um, she showed great leadership abilities very quickly to her team. She was asked to lead a group of this, they quickly realized that for her to gain uh, additional skills, that she should probably go through our program. And as a result, she's learning all these great skills and becoming a more proficient leader. Not that she wasn't already, but better prepared. So because of the, of the work that you folks do and the, and the monies that you give, um, it makes this free training and, and job assistance uh, possible to members of all, all races and creeds and beliefs all through Pittsburgh. So thank you all very much. We're very honored to be with you all tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll get out of the way. I guess I'm getting, I don't think so. But okay, oh, what the heck. Oh yeah. We'll pretend, we'll pretend. <laughs> That was the best part of my evening. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Next up then would be the North Hills Community Outreach, Outreach Incorporated. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Hi, how are you? Here you go, Sharon. You thank you. Me? Sure, thank you. Hi, I'm Sharon Wolf. I'm Executive Director of North Hills Community Outreach. We're an organization. We're located in the North Hills of Pittsburgh, and we help people who are in crisis, poverty, and hardship. We do all kinds of things. We have basic needs programming that help people with making sure that they have all that they need to survive, sufficient food on the table, safe and affordable housing. And we also have a number of self-sufficiency programs that help people to get jobs, go back to school, and one of the components of that part of our programming is our transportation assistance program. In the North Hills, we, have, we serve people in a lot of communities that don't have public transportation or have very limited public transportation. So one of the biggest barriers um, for the people that we serve, about 75 to 80% of whom are women, women who are either single or older or women with young children, single moms. Um, one of their biggest barriers to getting where they need to go, whether it be the job or getting their kids where they need to be, is the lack of transportation. So we have a transportation assistance program 
that helps people to get cars, to keep their cars in working order, to um, get, uh, cover the cost of transportation if they do have public transportation. And it's that program that Women of Southwestern PA supports. Specifically what women allows us to add to that program is peace of mind because what you provide is AAA memberships for these women. And so this allows people, because most of the cars that they do have are older, they have a lot of miles on them, they buy used cars, or they're trying to keep a car running for a very long time. And now they have the peace of mind that if something goes wrong on the road, they can call AAA and they can get help. And if any of you have ever been stranded on a road in a broken down car with a couple of kids, <laughs> okay, you know the value of that. It's really priceless. So thank you so very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Next would be Off the Floor Pittsburgh. Hi, I'm Bob Myers. I'm the executive director of Off the Floor Pittsburgh. If you haven't heard of us, what we are is a furniture bank. Furniture bank is like a food bank, except the boxes that people get from us are really big, so, uh, and generally pretty heavy. Uh, we, last year, we provided furniture to 531 homes in the Southwest PA area. That's about 9,000 individual items of furniture. Um, I think I handled 80, 8,988 of them. Uh, it is a pretty labor-intensive project, but uh, we are fortunate that we have a lot of donors from the general public who provide us good used furniture that we're then able to repurpose and rehome into the homes of folks who come from many of the programs in this room, uh, Monyoc Community Services, uh, Women's Center and Shelter. So when they're leaving and getting a new apartment, getting reestablished after domestic violence or a fire or some other life situation, uh, we're able to help them get that home set up, turn that corner so that's another major hurdle in their life that's put past them. So I like to say one thing unique about us is a lot of us here in the room deal with everyday life situations in the clients we serve and the families we serve. We're fortunate that when we go into a home, if we do our job the way we want to do it and we do it right, that in 45 minutes we've seen one of their life situations solved. And not too many charities have the, the ability to say that, and it's nice. So we leave with a lot of sense of gratification at the end of the day. Um, even though it's hard, it's heavy, it's intense, but to see so many people cry or hug you on the way out the door, and you didn't know them 45 minutes earlier, uh, but the fact of the matter is you've turned the corner for their life, so that's important. Last year, 2,388 individuals were served through our program. Uh, over 1,300 were kids. And uh, so that's a lot of furniture. It's a lot of beds. We estimate well over 900 beds were distributed, and we never have enough beds for kids. Um, uh, you can imagine young kids uh, having accidents and ruining the mattress and things like that. So not as many get donated as we need. So we're appreciative to the Women of Southwest PA for their grant. It'll help us to purchase uh, and acquire the necessary things we need to provide additional beds for kids. So thank you. This isn't our first grant, but we do greatly appreciate the continued support. Yeah, thank you, Bob. Great work. Thank you. And next would be our clubhouse. I'm very grateful to be here. Thank you. This is our first time here. I'm Danny. I'm the executive director of our clubhouse. We are located in the Strip District. We have a second location in Greensburg. At our clubhouse, we believe no one should face cancer alone. And we know that when cancer happens, it happens to the whole family. And that's why we provide programs and activities for everybody touched by cancer. That's folks with the diagnosis as well as the ones that care for them. We offer... I, if I had 10 minutes, I would tell you everything, but I'll go through a few. We have clinical support in the form of support groups, individual one-on-one -on -one counseling families. We have a child life specialist on staff, so she meets with children. Um, you can call us, and we can talk to you over the phone about how to have a tough conversation with anybody in your life about a diagnosis or a prognosis. 
Uh, we also offer health and wellness activities. We have free yoga every day. We offer Reiki, oncology, massage, all kinds of stuff in our wellness studio. We have an art studio where you can do creative writing and quilting and beading and jewelry making. Um, we cook for members. We have nutrition and lots of parties um, because we want to celebrate the good. Um, primarily what we do is provide the space and opportunity for folks that are experiencing a similar journey to be together and to support each other. So we're there to provide the support that often happens organically with folks in the room. Um, and the grant that you provided to us, we were able to utilize for Camp Clubhouse. So we have a very thriving family and youth program. And camp is for one week in the summer. We get 50 kids, um, all the children touched by cancer. And it's a day camp, which is really important because most camps, um, in the Pittsburgh region anyway, most camps for children are overnight. Um, and if, I've heard from so many mothers that when their child is in active treatment, they're just afraid, they, they're just nervous, even though the nurses and medical professionals at the camp, of course, could handle everything very well. They want their kid with them, so um, it's often the only experience that the kids like that can have. Denise was telling me that she spoke with one of our mothers um, that came to camp this year, and it's funny because the my favorite part of camp is the moms, because um, some of them won't, won't leave our camp, so we invite them to stay, but. They often don't know each other, but we have a very large foyer and they'll sit and converse during the day and talk and they're developing friendships and sharing information and supporting each other as well. So um, camp, they have field trips, everybody comes, arcade, uh, comedy, the children's museum, the science center, um, and it's often the only time, children that have cancer um, meet other kids with cancer in the hospitals. Children that have a sibling with cancer, they're usually the only kid at school that has a sibling with cancer, and they feel very isolated and very alone. So our camp brings them all together as well. Um, so thank you so much for your support. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. And now I'm actually going to turn this microphone over to my uh, partner in crime on the philanthropy committee, Lisa McLaughlin. Glass. Okay, let's keep things going here. Um, do we have someone here from Primetime Adult Care? A representative? Nope. Second Sam 9? Great. Hi, my name is Barb Barnhart, and I'm here representing Second Sam 9. Second Sam 9 is uh, a program that has been designed as an answer to prayer. Um, my best friend from where I taught school, and I taught kindergarten, so if you all would ask me to tie your shoe, I'd be less nervous. <laughs> but anyway, she, um, when her daughter Olivia was born, she had some needs, and they began praying. They knew that she would be fine through the school system, that they could monitor, but they were concerned about what they would do once Olivia moved out of the program from the school systems. And so they began praying. And God blessed in that seven years ago, we were able to open a facility that meets the physical, intellectual, and developmental needs of adults, and it's faith-based. And we are able to, right now we have 13 adults in our program who attend faithfully and at no cost to them. And we are able to do all kinds of wonderful things to help them grow and mature and just feel safe and loved every day. And your wonderful gift enabled us to purchase an electric wheelchair that will help us take them where they need to be. And uh, whether it's to exercise or to go on field trips, and we are just so blessed to have you as part of our team. And we know 
that this is going to continue to bless our uh, clients and also the joy that we can now share. We've been running a facility and this coming spring we break ground for our own <coughs> building. And so we're just so very thankful. Thank you. Sister's place. Good evening, everyone. First, I want to say it is such an honor and a pleasure to be in a room full of such amazing people and amazing organizations, so thank you. Um, Sister's Place is a, um, a program working with homeless families, uh, families who are experiencing homelessness. We provide housing and supportive services to those families to break that cycle of homelessness and to get them back on their feet and into their own homes and into their own um, situations where they have the control back. So this grant has actually helped us with staff training. It's something that um, is often overlooked but vitally important, I think, in, especially when you're working with um, such difficult topics. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a bit of a cold. Um, our staff has been able to go to these training sessions to help with wellness. Um, I've personally gone to a training to help with fundraising. We're always learning new and exciting ways to actually bring the dollars in to help the organization. It's also helped with our after school program and our six week summer camp for our children. Um, one of our kids was actually about, their family was about to graduate from the program and he looked, <laughs> he looked at our um, program director and said, but, but I want to stay for summer camp. So <laughs> it was um, that, it, it impacted him that much. And he wanted to stay in the program to actually be a part of the summer camp. Um, he and his sister and his brother, so we, we let them stay for the summer camp. <laughs> but it provides an opportunity for the children to be with, um, in a normal summer camp environment. If you think about it, some of the families um, who are experiencing homelessness, their children don't have a normal experience, so to speak. They aren't able to go to Kennywood, maybe on a regular basis. They aren't able to go to the zoo or to a water park or even to the pool and even swim lessons. So the summer camp really uh, provides those opportunities for them. And we're so very grateful for the grant that was awarded to us for that. So thank you. Uh, Society of St. Vincent de Paul. Good evening, everyone. It's my pleasure to be here with all of you. My name is Maria Fetok. I am the Director of Operations for the Society of St. Vincent de Paul Union Town Conference. The Society of St. Vincent de Paul has a very simple mission, and that is to provide help and hope to those in need. And we do it in any way that we can, from food, furniture, clothing, lodging, you name it, utility assistance, I'm sure we have had that request and we've done our best to help. All of our funds come from sales from our thrift store and our furniture store. We also have a very small recycling department and simply the generosity of our community. I have a very small staff. We have myself plus nine others, but we have over 250 volunteers and we could not do what we do without them. Among the 250, to 250 volunteers is a group called Here Fayette. It was founded in 2010 by Kathy Zimmerman. She could not be here with you this evening, so I have the pleasure of telling you about Here Fayette. Here Fayette not only provides a chance for social interaction for individuals who are deaf or have hearing disabilities, but also they provide hearing aids, hearing aid batteries, other sorts of assisted uh, listening devices and also conduct sign language classes so our community can come together and learn uh, to communicate with those who communicate through sign language. One, one member of here Fayette, she too could not be here this evening but I do have Beth with me this evening who is a member of here Fayette, but Diana is the recipient of the grant. Thank you very much. Diana is 50 years old and she is deaf. She communicates by sign language and I I think I know a little bit of sign language, but when Diana does it, it is a blur. 
I catch nothing. <laughs> but because of this grant, Diana is able to go to California University. It provides transportation. She does not have a driver's license and she is learning speech therapy. So she definitely has a voice and she's learning how to use it. And today was the first time that I was able to understand that Diana was looking for bottles of water and we were able to give her that. So it takes her about four hours round trip to use public transportation to get there. But I'm told she loves every minute and her speech is improving every day. So on behalf of Kathy Zimmerman, here Fayette and the recipient, Diana, Thank you for your generosity. Thank you. Uh, do we have a representative from South Hills Interfaith Movement? Hello, my name is Diana Hunsberger. Uh, this is I, this is my first time here. I've only been at South Hills Interfaith Movement for ten months, but I am. I absolutely love my job, and I love being here to see the just greater impact of so many organizations like mine that are changing lives and just making people stand up again and giving them meaning. And it's, it's, it's choking up. <laughs> um, South Hills Interfaith Movement, uh, we are a basic needs organization. Uh, there's a food pantry, there's uh, summer gardens, there's clothes closet, that's at our main office. I work out of the family center. I am the our early childhood program teacher. We have uh, our, most of the family center uh, clients are from refugee camps and they are immigrants. So you can imagine that coming to America with no English, with a family is overwhelming <coughs> and you, have lost your, you, you, you meant something and you had purpose in your old country and you come here and you don't know where to start. And so our organization, the Family Center, has many uh, people that are helping with bills and helping with trying to find housing and, and services. The grant specifically this year was for empowering women and children. Uh, there's a Christina, our counselor with women, she's taking them to different cultural events. They've done a career program. They have, they've done a parenting program. She's now in some libraries uh, meeting with some moms. And also there's um, some fifth graders called Rolling Our Experiences have also benefited from the group this year. Uh, just young ladies uh, living in America and learning what it's like to become two different cultures. So thank you so much. This is actually, I was told this is the seventh year, so this is amazing. <laughs> amazing for all that we get to do because of you. So thank you. Uh, South Park Meals on Wheels, uh, care of Grace Lutheran Church. Hi, I'm Pam Nason from South Park Meals on Wheels. And this coming March, March 9th in fact, is our 30th anniversary of the Meals on Wheels program. It was started in a Lutheran church and it's still there. <laughs> we have, when we started, we had 27 clients. We had four routes. Now we have, as of today, we have 94 clients. We have seven routes, and it's not just South Park. We call it South Park because that's where we're centered, but we do all of South Park, all of Pleasant Hills, uh, part of Jefferson Hills, part of South Baldwin, South Whitehall, um, even to the edges of um, Bethel Park, and we refuse absolutely no one, and we are so blessed to get this gift tonight. It's, it's wonderful because most of the people, it started out where they would donate if they could, maybe $5 a day. They get, we give them breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They get everything they need for the day. And lately, most of them can't pay anything. And I think one of the saddest things that's happened this year is when they call me and ask me if they can change from five days a week to maybe three days. And I'll ask them why, you know, and they'll say, well, my rent went up and they can't pay for it. And I said, I don't care. 
We're gonna feed you no matter what. But this generation wants to pay their way. So we work it out. You know, I said, give me a dollar a week, and that's fine. And this is really helping us feed more and more people. And then our two ovens just went. <laughs> so we need to replace the ovens, and um, this, this money is a real blessing. Thank you so much for everything that everybody does. Thank you. Do we have a representative here from the Salvation Army? Oh, of course we do. Sorry, I was waiting in the wing. I was looking for you. Hello, everyone. I'm Captain Amber Imhoff. My husband and I are the pastors and commanding officers here at the Washington Salvation Army. And our grant went towards our cooking class program uh, that started last school year. Uh, and we've had over 400 kids come through our doors and complete at least four weeks of cooking class with us. And we teach kids as young as kindergarten all the way up through high school. So tonight was our kindergarten through second grade Thanksgiving edition. So they learned how to make homemade stuffing and pumpkin parfaits and they get to feast. And every week we do a complete meal. Um, but our grant went towards purchasing aprons for each of the kids to be able to take home. Um, we try and send them home with a cooking tool as well. And our cooking program really started as part of our Feeding Families for Life campaign that is across Western PA to really get families back engaged and sitting around the table with one another. Uh, we know that there's a drug epidemic. We have drug and alcohol rehab centers that we run, um, but we want to combat that before we get to that point, and part of that is getting people engaged at the table and doing life together once again. Uh, so we try and teach our young people that so that one, they are putting healthy food into their bodies, but two, they have the skill to be able to share with their families, eat together with their families. Uh, in addition to that, we do run a Love in a Backpack program currently in nine schools in Washington County, uh, and we service 597 children every single week on Thursdays. <laughs> So life is busy on Thursday. Um, but thank you for all that you do. Thank you for your support. And uh, have a wonderful night. The Still Remembered Project. Hi, everybody. I'm Lauren McLean. I'm the executive director for the Still Remembered Project. We call it SRP. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with our organization, we work with women and families who have experienced a pregnancy infant loss um, through miscarriage, stillbirth, or early infant death. And this is our third year here. Um, we're so blessed. We're a young nonprofit. We started in um, 2016. And women has, you know, you guys have been behind us. Um, you're such a blessing. So um, we asked this year for the grant to be, to go towards our Still Missed project. We have six different projects under SRP that focus on different facets of grief. And Still Missed is geared towards miscarriage. Um, it's it happens every day. Uh, we know statistics, one in four women. And it doesn't just affect the woman, it affects the man, the family, you know. Um, and we, in 2017, we launched this project and we had a survey go out and we surveyed a men and women and asked, if you experienced a miscarriage, and, and they did, um, what would you have liked to receive? And what would you have liked someone to say? and what would have been helpful. And so we got this overwhelming response that it was just an acknowledgement of my baby and that my baby mattered. So we put together a small, um, it's in a little white box. It's called a miscarriage care package. If you go to stillremembered.org, you can see photos of all of our items. Uh, we do a bunch of different remembrance keepsakes. But the still, um, the still missed packages, um, we, Gave, about a, gave out about 250 uh, in 2017 and in 2018. Our projected uh, amount that we were gonna be able to provide for 2019 was 550. So when we asked women 
um, for the grant, we were hoping you know, that the funding would help to be able to cover that. Well, we are at 900 to date for 2019. This project has really been incredible. It's been able to um, touch the lives of so many um, women and families. And in our little um, packages, we have a letter to the mom and to the family, a remembrance card, and it also includes journal prompts. We also include um, a little journal and a pen. We include a handkerchief to dry their tears and a bracelet to hold on to hope. And they are distributed through OBGYN offices, ultrasound facilities, emergency departments. We have pastors that carry them. We have given them directly to bereaved families. So we just really want to say thank you because of you guys. We've really been able to help um, pilot this to be able to go to more families and go into more hospitals and reach more, more people in the community. So we just want to say thank you. Oh my gosh, don't cry. I've been good. Good all night. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Get these glasses back on. Village of FPC. Hi, I'm Diane Nettles, and I'm with the village, and uh, I am a um, I'm in the childhood childhood education department at California University of Pennsylvania. And I wanted to tell you a little story. I have all these notes here, but I thought of a story and it, it kind of um, resonates with me. But okay, back in September, my daughter-in-law asked me to go to the Rib Fest in Pittsburgh and to take my uh, granddaughter. So my granddaughter who is three and my daughter-in-law and I went down to Pittsburgh to the rib fest. You know, it's kind of cool, you, you know, you test the ribs and see which ones you like, but Charlotte, the three-year-old, was most interested in the, the little play area that they had for the kids. And there was this um, you know, bouncy ball houses and stuff, but there was this one bungee jumping ride adventure, a picture of Maypole, and then there's cords coming off of it, and then the kids strap into it, you know, and then there's a trampoline on the ground, and they stand on it and jump up and go up real high. Okay, so that's $10 to buy that right. Of course, Charlotte wanted to do it, and her mother said, of course, oh no, you can't do that. We've been in the bouncy house. It's time to go home, and it's $10. It's too expensive for, you know, just a little ride. Oh, I have to, I have to go. I said, she's with Gigi. She can, she can go on the ride, okay? So we paid the $10 and she got on the ride. Jumping up in the air, having a ball, you know, laughing, hands up high, look at me. The ride, it, the experience is about five minutes. So she got off, I wanna go again, I wanna go again. No, you've already been once, it's $10, too expensive to go again, Time to go home. Oh, no, no, I want to go again. I said, she's with Gigi. She can go again. So we went again, paid the $10, went again. Okay, so about halfway through this ride, she's up in the air and she's bawling, crying her eyes out, tears coming down her face. And we're looking at each other, what is wrong with this child? I said, Charlotte, what's wrong, what's wrong? I thought maybe, you know, the straps hurt or whatever. I know this ride is almost over and I don't want to get off. I, I want to keep going. And I realized how much we're like her, how much it, you know, it's so hard to live in the moment because you're worried about what's coming next. And all these organizations that the women uh, the women of Southwestern Pennsylvania have supported, help people live in the moment without having to worry about what's coming next. And so the village of um, FPC is located in California, PA, and it's a child care and preschool for, um, you know, obviously young children. And we provide um, 
um, reduced child care for single parents who want to finish their ed education at CalU. So you provided us with this grant this year, and we were able to um, do a um, Facebook ad campaign. And Cherie Sears, president of the village, and Clark Harrison tell me that this, this is what happened. The Facebook ad campaign resulted in 18,276 impressions, 489 clicks, and 55 event responses, which is well above average. <clears throat> 438 people found us on Google, and from August, there was a 41% increase in the number of people visiting our website in just the first month that this ad camp campaign started. So that's pretty cool, thanks, thanks to you. One more thing, then I'll shut up. Mr. Fred Rogers said, we live in a world in which we need to share responsibility. It's easy to say, it's not my child, not my community, not my world, not my problem. Then there are those who see the need and respond. I consider those people my heroes. Thank you. Thank you so much. You are heroes. Is there a representative here from Watchful Shepherd? I'm going to stick to a script, so I'll be quick because we're nearing the end. So my name is Trish Solana. I am with Watchful Shepherd, and they have been around for 26 years now from Joe Femiani, who saw a need um, with abused children and decided to, he was driven by his passion to do his part in preventing child abuse. So we are a child abuse prevention agency that provides alarm systems in homes where there is a threat of abuse or neglect. An alarm unit is placed in the home similar to the I've fallen and can't get up unit and waterproof wristbands are given to the children so in case of an emergency the buttons can be pushed and it will call for emergency services to come to the home and make sure that the children are safe. So it is used as a tool for caseworkers to utilize as an essential part of the reunification process to keep families together because no transition means less trauma. So thanks to this grant, we are able to put in 40 more units and continue our ability to not charge any family or any agency utilizing this tool, a tool that has been 100% effective in the homes that it has been placed in. So to be able to protect children from abuse or neglect has been an important part of my life for many years now. To be able to do it and have a community rally around and want to be a part of that very same mission is humbling, so thank you. Whitehall United Presbyterian Church, Food for Kids. Thank you. My name is Sherry Densmore, and I have to tell you, I am just in awe of this group. What a wonderful celebration and opportunity to network here tonight. I really, truly am in awe of all of you. And Jan Kennedy, I don't know if you remember me. <laughs> I see so you stood up here at the beginning, and I said, I know that lady. I was a Bethel Park School nurse. Oh! <laughs> And anyway, because I was a Bethel Park School nurse when I retired, I knew that what I would miss most was my kids. And I was right. But every Friday, I get a kid fix because I lead a mission team at Whitehall Presbyterian Church. And when we meet, I always ask the ladies, and it's ladies, unfortunately, no, no gentlemen have joined us. But I say, has God placed anything on your heart that we need to attend to today. And so at the April meeting in 2016, of course I asked my question, and they all sat there and looked at me, and we had our meeting, and at the end I said, again, has God placed anything on your heart that we need to attend to? And one of our, I guess she's about 80 years old, maybe a little bit older, ladies said, 
I have something I've really been thinking a lot about, and I'm really concerned about it. And I said, Lois, what is it? She said, childhood hunger. I said, Lois, we're living in Whitehall, you know, Whitehall, Pennsylvania. There's no childhood hunger here. And she said, I've been thinking a lot about this, Sherry, and I think there is. And lo and behold, we looked into it, and oh, yes, there is a lot of food insecurity in the Baldwin Whitehall School District. So I'm here to tell you that eight little old women <laughs> can get together and can start something really great. And we thought, well, we don't know what we're doing. So we, we, we did some research and we found out that 37 to 50% of the student population in Baldwin Whitehall are on the free and reduced lunch program. So we said, well, they're getting free breakfast and they're getting free lunch at school. What are they doing on the weekends? And so we, we, we got ourselves together. We figured out what we could put into these bags. We talked to the school district. We said, we gotta start small. And they said, well, go to the smallest elementary. And we started out the first year we fed 114 kids. Um, a bag of food, two entrees, two breakfasts, snacks, enough food to get them through the weekend. We chose food that the kids could prepare themselves because we are aware that often they are by themselves. So we fed 114 that first year. The second year, we were up to 128. This year, we started the year with 182 kids in this one little elementary school. The school district wants us to take on all three elementary schools, which we would love to do. And thanks to the gift that you gave us, we are able to provide food. Every dollar that comes into our organization pays for food for the kids. We don't have any overhead. We work out of the church. The district comes and picks up the bins of food on Friday mornings. Three of us go to the school and we distribute, we distribute the food. And like I said, I'm an old school nurse. I get my fix on Friday afternoons. So I thank you. I, I thank the ladies of Southwestern. You're fabulous. And if anybody would like to come help bags, help pack bags on Friday mornings, we're there every Friday morning, Whitehall Presbyterian Church. Thank you very much. Women's Center and Shelter of Greater Pittsburgh. Oh, what was that? Oh, she went earlier. Oh, that's right, because she was leaving. For, sorry, I forgot. Okay, Women's Center Beaver. Oh, now you knew. <laughs> Hi, I'm Darlene Thomas. I'm the Executive Director at the Women's Center of Beaver County, and I just want to say it's a real privilege to be here. This is the first time that we've received a grant from Women of Southwestern PA, and it's a privilege to see the scope of assistance that you're providing in our region. I really had no idea and I'm really impressed. In terms of the Women's Center of Beaver County, we provide comprehensive services to victims and survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault. So that includes a 24-hour helpline, counseling, advocacy, and emergency shelter services. Specifically, what you have provided for us is a grant to support our economic empowerment program for women in our emergency shelter. When women come to the shelter, sometimes people think when you flee a violent relationship, that's kind of the end of your journey of violence, when in reality it's just the beginning. Women come to shelter literally most of the time with almost nothing. And so it's a point in time when really they're starting over, they have a lot of barriers in life, they may really lack a lot of support. And so our economic empowerment program is helping them look at all of those things they need to be able to put into place to be able to move on safely from the shelter. What we're using the grant funds for are to provide transportation assistance to the women in the program. So specifically, we have purchased bus tickets and gas cards to eliminate that transportation barrier to be able to enable them to get out in the community, to access resources, to look for housing, and to look for employment. Um, so I just want to thank you 
for being that piece of the puzzle, helping our clients get their lives back together. I'm not sure, is the Women's Choice Network here? No? Well, that's it. That's the end of our program here. Do you have anything to say, Jenny? Oh, I'm sorry. Our co-presidents would like to say a few words. Thank you so much. Thank you. I just want to thank all of you for coming tonight from a far distance, a number of you after a hard day at work. And um, I've been teary-eyed all night. We are every year, but this is our inspiration to work hard and try to get as much money as we can to go into our grant program. And when we sometimes think, are we gonna get sponsors? Or are we gonna be able to raise things to run our raffles? Uh, we come to this evening and it's like, oh yeah, we are. You know, because you're our heroes. You are the people on the front lines and we are so grateful for what you are doing. And I thank also the Social Programs Committee, the Philanthropy Committee for putting this evening together. We have our only one fundraiser and our co-president Denise is going to speak to you about it. But before I hand her the microphone, I just wanted to recognize, and she'll kill me, a brand new sponsor that we have for Symphony of Food. Roxanne Agostinelli from Keller Williams uh, is a sponsor. So next year when you are applying, it'll be thanks to Roxanne that some of this money will be co coming to you. Do we have any other sponsors here tonight? Okay, well thank you Roxanne. And Denise, talk about Symphony of Food. What you saw and heard this evening is the culmination of a lot of the effort that began back in February of 2018 when we began working on our annual fundraiser, which took place in January of 2019. So how do we top that? You heard a lot of really interesting stories tonight. I'm very glad that you asked. This is the commercial piece. In February of this year, we began the planning on our upcoming annual once a year, annual fundraising event, the Symphony of Food, which will be held on, ja on January 24th, 2020, at the Balasera Event Center in Cannonsburg. As women of southwestern Pennsylvania are now in our 20th year, we're working hard to make this our best event ever. Our members are very actively working on many aspects, and many more hands make the work lighter and a lot more rewarding. As members, if you can do more, let somebody know. As our 2019 grant recipients, please let us know of any potential guests that you think we should reach out and talk to about coming and joining us. Also, to our grant recipients this evening, you've humbled us. We do get choked up about this. You've humbled us with your work, your comments, and your presence. You're a large part of why we exist. You represent the 38 organizations that we were blessed to be able to help this year. Please, we need to hear from you. Keep in touch, whether by electronic or postal updates. We want to hear about your organizations, and we share this information with our membership. We need to know and understand what's going on and how we can help you. We wish for you a very special holiday season and so much more blessing. And as a reminder, as we said before, from a networking perspective, go onto our website. Our member Lori Ruchin has made sure that the contact information for all of you is there, and that makes for some wonderful networking. I'd also like to again acknowledge the talents and the commitment this evening from our two students from our local Peters Township High School. What they filmed this evening will be showing at the Symphony of Food, 
We want people to dig in their pockets and yank everything out. So we want to make sure that they hear about the good work that all of you are doing, so you're helping us get there. And also, just one more shout out to Peters Township High School. Um, a number of students from the same group did filming for us this week where some of our chefs were interviewed and our member Kathy Knutz, our past president, um, talked a lot about Symphony of Food and that is airing for us several times between, between now and the Thanksgiving holiday. More advertisement, it's wonderful. Thank you for your attendance and attention this evening. This is a really important night for us, sorry. <laughs> and to our grant recipients, the best thank you ever. Thank you. 